Okay, so you are at 675 North 41st Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is uh, right off of 41st and Lancaster Avenue. Standing behind me is the home of the first urban earthship uh, in the world. Uh, an earthship is a building that has uh, six design principles. It was invented by Michael Reynolds in New Mexico. I was watching this movie called Garbage Warrior. And it was a story about Michael Reynolds, who's an architect. And the story was about the building that he had uh, come up with, a design he had come up with. And um, in New Mexico, they threatened to take away his license because of him doing this work. So the six design principles, any building that encompasses these six design principles can call itself an earthship. There are over 20,000 earthships all over the world, but there are also a lot of earthship inspired homes. This will be the first earthship in Philadelphia uh, in an urban environment in the world. Uh, based on six design principles, the first being solar and wind electricity. If you see right now, it's uh, close to 12 o'clock in the afternoon and we have a great deal of sun. Uh, we're close to the fall time of the year and the summer, the sun repositions in itself, but you still, we still get a great deal of sun. There's no obstructions on this corner, uh, no buildings, you know, that ca catches us, keeps us from catching the sun light. Um, the sun, we can get and use uh, the power from the sun all day long. There's nothing um, keeping that from us. Water harvesting from rain or snow. This particular building catches rain from the sky and harvests it into cisterns. This particular building will have two cisterns, uh, each about 7,500 gallons apiece. Here in Philadelphia, there's a problem with rain runoff. And um, essentially what that means is when it rains here in Philadelphia and the, and the water touches the ground and in the city pavement and the concrete and then runs into our streams, it contaminates our water. And um, in Philadelphia, there was a recent st survey and a study of what kind of contaminants were found in water that was supposedly clean. And among those contaminants were, you know, drugs and, and fecal matter. And this is very concerning for somebody who loves water. It's the number one thing that you need to live. Your body is made mostly of water, and it's my favorite drink. So this particular house not only catches its own water from the sky, because it catches its water from the sky, it's never touched the ground. So it's a little bit more cleaner than the water that you get, that you get at your house in a conventional home. But also this house uses the water four times. Uh, generally in your house, if you go to the bathroom and you flush the toilet, you'll notice that that's clean water using to push the matter down. And uh, this is the same throughout the country. And it's physically flushing clean water down the toilet. And there's so many of our brothers and sisters all around the world who don't have access to clean water, and we're literally flushing it down the toilet. This particular house captures rainwater, uses it, the water that you use in the bathroom and in the sink, uses that water to flush the toilet. And then that water comes out to the planter, and then that water goes out to the sewer. That's contained into the house. This house contains its own sewage, which is the third part of the design principle. This house is a totally off-grid home, and it relies solely on itself and on natural phenomena to operate. So in terms of um, uh, any kind of natural disasters, or even something that not such so much as a disaster, or something that occurs more common, where there's blackouts in a storm. Uh, you won't be susceptible to the same kind of blackouts to the rest of your neighbors because your house creates its own power throughout the year. And whatever power your house doesn't use, it packs in the battery. And this particular house will generate enough electricity to sell back to the grid. So you're, you're instead, of giving, uh, instead of giving Pico a check, they'll be giving you a check for the electric electricity that's generated by your house. Clean energy that's generated by your house. <laughs> The, this the fourth is my favorite, which is one of the reasons why I fell in love with the house, which is the, the food production. Uh, this house grows uh, its own food all year round. Those gardeners out there know certain times of the year you have to wait for the frost line to break before you can really do any work. And the, the beauty of this house is there is no frost line. So all year round you're growing food and uh, a good gardener knows you should change out what you grow each year so you have better variety. And uh, also a sense of accomplishment from watching a seed go to harvest and you were part of the life and the love that helped feed that happen and that's my most favorite part um the building with natural and recycled materials as you see behind me there are a plethora of natural and recycled materials here we bought to the site about uh 238 tires someone else dumped the other 400 
uh, which also brings to issue the forefront of the issue of dumping in Philadelphia. Illegal tire dumping is a, is a big issue here in Philadelphia. In fact, the city is trying to combat it with uh, their tire roundup that they do every year in which they uh, pay nonprofits 50 cents per tire that they can get out of the Schuylkill River. So you see here on the land we have lumber that's been repurposed that we can reuse for all different parts of the house. Uh, insulation, you know, rigid foam that we can use for insulation. Right now it might not look like much, but the materials that a conventional house uses, they all have something called an R value. And that determines how much heat comes in and out of your house. So you could be living in a brand new house that got probably built in six months, but it feels like there's always cold, there's always a draft coming in. The windows, doors, it's not really sealed. Okay, so this particular house is, has a high R value because it's rubber encased. So the rubber and the steel keeps the wind from going uh, inside of the house and also the heat from escaping. And it's also how the house keeps its thermal uh, capacity. It catches the heat from the sun and then it releases it back into the house when the house is cooled off. So um, we have lumber, we have tires, which are the building blocks of the house. This particular house will use 750 tires, but it's only a one bedroom. Uh, other houses can you know, be three to four, five, six bedrooms, in which case you're talking about tires into the thousands. But it's a small dent compared to the millions of tires that lay in the tire dumps right now that, that aren't going anywhere. Those tires aren't going anywhere. They're out, they'll outlive all of us. So if we can start building things out of them and using them, reusing them uh, scientifically and for a purpose, I think that we can like really have like a, a whole housing phenomenon happen on vacant land. I'm not talking about changing existing buildings so much, even though you can retrofit. I'm talking about land that's not being used, buildings that's being already abused and neglected, trash that's already accumulating and doing something with those things. You see here along this wall, we started a can wall just to teach the children and the youth uh, and the students that we had on the property how to build a can wall. There'll be walls like this inside of the building. They're non-load bearing, meaning there'll be no weight on the walls. They'll be there for aesthetic value only. For most earth ships, most of them are U-shaped. But we decided to put a square shape on this particular building because it's in the city so that the people who came inside the building would feel a little bit more comfortable with the concept. Uh, because there was so much pushback with uh, the design. There was a lot of um, concern about the look, the aesthetic from the outside. I think uh, I'm quoting someone from City Hall saying that it looked like a Flintstone house. So we're trying to change it to give it a little bit more of an urban feel, but at the same time still capture the uniqueness that we want this house to have. Hi, people. <laughs> Uh, we came from Maryland and from Silver Spring and Tacoma Park and um, we think that's very important to bring our kids so they, they, they learn how to treat better the earth, better than us. <laughs> Look at the responsibility for you. What else? Uh, we, we come from different backgrounds but we, we are so worried about the you know, environmental um, issues and housing and all these things and uh, this project gets many things together the community aspect of it too of working together so that's what makes us drive from far away <laughs> to do this today so we are here today at the love loving love airship in west philadelphia building a sustainable off-grid building my name is jonah reynolds we're here with the crew i'm here with jennifer ventresca when human beings come together, they can do anything, anything. There are no divisions. And thank you. Thank you. Um, if you want to learn more about what we're doing, if you want to support us in any way, um, first we ask you to just uh, please spread the word. Um, do a little bit more research about what an Earthship is, and just spread the word. Hashtag Earthship, hashtag Earthship Philadelphia, uh, just to get people talking about it. But you can reach us at love, lovinglove.org. So I, I thank y'all for coming and visiting us here at the Earthship, and I hope that you um, have an open mind for the process. You're going to see a lot of things that um, you don't normally see at a construction site. Children and dogs and people smoking and eating and singing and guitars. And it might look a little strange, but the end result is going to look a lot like a regular corporate America building. But 
the only different in, is the ingredients that went into the house and one of them is love so i hope you enjoy the journey that we're about to embark on together and um thanks for letting me share with you today